Hey, hi folks, this is Polly. Um, wow. <laughs> so, um, yeah, about 10 days ago, I, um, yeah, I wasn't in this position and I, uh, I found myself blowing up really big. So what does that mean? <laughs> it means this and that's for real. That's like, that's my belly and so I found myself like you know like a majorly pregnant person and this thing is apparently ascites so what is ascites ascites means that there's a problem with the liver and it's blocking a vein that is messing with all the pressure and so I start leaking protein into my abdom abdominal cavity. And uh, so that is like fluid and stuff that is pushing on all different organs. And it, it blows you up so tight that, and it's so quickly that it, unlike nine months of pregnancy where your body gets used to it slowly, I guess it's like being on the rack slowly. Well, this is like being on the rack quickly. <laughs> so uh, I thought that this would be a slow process and and uh, and I could adjust, but it was a very fast process and it really hit me. So two weeks ago I was able to dance and muck around and, um, and then a couple of days ago... I spent four days unable to eat, just on liquid, struggling to get liquid down, <laughs> um, in a lot of pain. So waking up about three times a night to have hot baths and wheat bags and various things. And, um, and you know, the, the entire gastrointestinal tract floating and pushing and not moving and not emptying and so all of that pressure downwards uh, in the like bomb department <laughs> without getting too graphic and uh, yeah so none of that was working and then I found that trying to walk her even around the block was impossible a hundred meters and uh, my heart was going too fast for my breathing because all the pressure um, pushes on the rib cage and puts all the muscles into spasm in your all your respiratory muscles and all your lumbar. So a lot of muscular spasming and tightness that doesn't allow any movement and then um, really struggling to breathe. And you know it was it was full on. So what did we do? Um, I was offered plenty of painkillers, which is okay. And I started doing them even though I really don't like the idea of painkillers. But Chris came up with some really great ideas and um, he's an awesome, <laughs> awesome, fabulous husband and exactly what you want at this point. And um, he came up with the heat pads. So these are on the bed and um, they they keep all the really really harmed uh, muscles warm <laughs> which was really helpful <laughs> and uh, reduced the pain a lot we had a tens thing which does electrical impulses and kind of zaps pain in the lumbar muscles that are being really pushed in all this full-on um, we I went on glutamine that helped me to finally stop shitting through the eye of a needle and allowed me to pee because um, it just gave some integrity to the bowel, which was really good. And of course, it's really hard because, um, uh, you know, I, it's difficult to put my shoes on <laughs> like a nine month pregnant person. And, but um, of course, I'm putting pressure on a liver that's got a lot of tumors. So it's not the same really as being pregnant. and um, But I learned a lot of tips from pregnant people, <laughs> which is really helpful. 
um, I got some bathing suits that supported all my lumbar muscles and put all the weight on my shoulders instead of everywhere else and I cut a big thing in the front and allowed all the distension to kind of pour out and that was really helpful for a bit. Um, I share these because ascites is really you don't have a lot of time when you get to that point and uh, people don't really know what you can do um, I guess you know you're really having a lot of trouble with the bowel and so you've got to babysit that and hopefully you've got some management and that gives you some dignity and but tomorrow they're going to uh, do this paracentesis thing where they stick a needle into your abdomen and pull fluid out and they basically put a little tap and they drain you <laughs> and take a lot of pressure off. Apparently I'll deflate and a lot of the issues will be much easier. As you can imagine it's very hard to drive because you've got to stay sitting up and you've got to be able to re react and uh, move your legs and you've got this huge big pregnant looking belly in the way so it's like trying to drive as somebody who has suddenly become nine months pregnant in ten days so uh, it was a huge change to my my sense of autonomy and my life but um, I still very much have enjoyed mucking around laughing I done some chair dancing uh, I'm doing reasonably today and yesterday I managed to sleep with very little pain really well managed getting some solid food now the last two days really big achievement um, so tomorrow when they drain me I'll have a lot of relief which is really great and then sometimes that fluid will take longer or shorter to build up again and that's the way it goes from here it's just giving me uh, as a dying person some quality of life which is really good um, but it's great to know that even really challenged there is still love and laughter and life pain makes it really hard <laughs> um, but if you can get the pain under control if you can understand where the pain is coming from um, and how you might wing it um, I think that that that's a really good thing it's about as good as you can do um, having the, the feeling all my life that I never fully identified with the body was really helpful because as you can imagine being suddenly someone who's like nine months pregnant is really a huge shock to the system in 10 days <laughs> and suddenly you know you look at people fixated with body image and you know I've had my breasts cut off I've lost all my hair I've got a pick line in my arm and now I look like I'm nine months pregnant and I can't make my gut work properly or the piddle department work properly or the breathing department work properly and and you think wow you know and people are so body identified and it really does you no favors the less you can get body identified and the more uh, comfortable you are about being more than just your body I think the easier this particular phase can be it's a real time to challenge your connection your 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 attachment your identification with body um yeah and I'm really glad that I was ahead of the game on that in a lot of ways so um yeah I guess um uh this is uh this is how it goes and this is the positive version is they'll go and drain me and I'll get um I suppose some some more weeks out of that of the draining thing 
but it's probably reached a point where they're going to eventually say, and if not tomorrow, they might say, that's it, your chemo isn't working, and you know, your third lot of chemo, the third drug. And, uh, and we're really just managing you now as we let the cancer do its thing and we manage the, the fallout from that. And at some point when I'm finished, the projects that I want to finish, and I'm close to that. I'm, I have, I'm writing an animation that I really want to finish. I have about 32 pages left to write. And at that point I said, you know, you can give me all the morphine you like then, but um, I'm, I'm a writer and writer's like a clear mind unless you're the alcoholic type of writer. So, um, yeah, just uh, I guess I'll be ready when, when that happens and I have no projects and it's, it's just a casual day and and I'm ready to rock and roll and they give me enough drugs that I know I stay asleep and then leave my machine off, my breathing machine and and I'll be I'll be ready. And that's what it's about. It's about that are you ready? And um yeah, I I'm feeling much more close to ready. <laughs> yeah. And that's that's not a you know I guess to the people who are not dying, that's a very strange thing. But it is part of this transition is getting to a point where you are ready. And, um, you know, they say that there's a time, there's a time for endurance and there's a time for fighting and there's a time for accepting and working with things. And, you know, the, they say there's a time for suffering and surrender. And hopefully the suffering is eased enough, but I guess it's also a bit of a gift because it pushes you to say you're ready and to say I am more than the body and um, yeah, and, and that's, that surrender thing. It's not surrender in weakness, it's surrendering the body. And when you surrender the body, Hopefully you feel that it was a life fully lived, that it was that you live on in some way, whether in you know, in my case I feel I live on in in the patchwork of all the people I've ever affected, the same as I am a patchwork of all the people who ever affected me and I look out the window and I see Chris having a life and it's a life that will move forward and it's not one that dies with me and I'm part of the patchwork that is him. And I am therefore out there with him in the garden and planting seeds and doing things and I think that's beautiful. Um, yes, I'll lose my conscious awareness of it, but I will have bits of me living on in all kinds of people in all kinds of places. Uh, through all kinds of things and whether it's my music or my writing or my art or just my personhood and the way it's it's impacted people just as they impacted me and that's a really uh, fabulous fabulous thing in this this thing of feeling it's a life well lived and and all this stuff about but you're so young or blah 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 I mean that's just stuff. That's rhetoric. Uh, this doesn't that doesn't speak to me. And um, yeah, and it's not just a time of misery and sadness, unless unless that's 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 how you how you how you take it. For me, it's also poignant and it's epic, and it's full of connection and and trust and seeing seeing all the life that will continue to live on that you affected that you were part of and and how you know yeah that that's that for me I'm just only my body's gone and uh and that's that's okay this body is way past its use by <laughs> and we all come with a different use by 
But I'll see you later when they've drained me and I no longer look like the big pregnant lady. So um, I will be so relieved when all this is like they take this out. <laughs> um, yeah, so they'll just go in and they'll drain it and I will deflate and that will be so much easier. <laughs> oh! Anyway, I couldn't talk to anyone about a couple of days ago. So I had an old friend, Mrs. Plant, and she died of cancer, but I knew her as a homeless teen, and she was a wild, feisty bugger. And uh, she took in a lot of uh, local kids, you know, and was just this place to have a cup of tea and a potato chip. <laughs> and she would always say, Watch out, these could be your good days. These could be your good days. And I now realize, you know, as I get closer to all this stuff, I keep hearing that. These could be your good days. And I don't, I don't complain about any of it because I know that in that, that thing of suffering and surrender, these could be your good days. And it makes me make everything into those good days and see the good days that's in it. It's amazing. So, um, yeah, at the moment it's, uh, and it's, we're not letting it limit us. So Chris, we had a wheelchair at the start of this journey and um, cause we knew that there'd come a time where I might need that. And uh, we started using it yesterday and we went out in nature and Chris found a way to sort of take me to see lovely water and we saw a musk duck and we saw an echidna and it was just a beautiful thing, kangaroos. And we went to a Buddhist temple that's local and open on a Sunday. It's just really peaceful and beautiful and uh, just so nice to, it's a different real world, it's a different real life but it's still one yeah okay that's it <laughs> bye folks